what are the biggest mistakes men make in breakups? What are the, the, the things that the guys do that are just like a big problem? Well, the biggest, biggest overall problem that most guys do when they are in a breakup is that remember one thing, a breakup and having a heartache is all about loss of power. That's really what it is. It's because it, somebody takes away the choice of you being in a relationship. You don't anymore. You don't any longer have this choice of being in a relationship. Somebody has took away that choice for you. So she doesn't want you anymore. And there's very little you can do to change her mind. Mm -hmm. And that's where heartbreak comes from. The, if you've ever experienced being- You, you a, lose control over your life when you, when yes. you break up. Because your life yes. becomes this relationship You've got your, pro you know, your, your property and all this, your dog and, and all these things become common property. And then when you break up, you lose control uh, yes. over, over, like, you know, not, not just control over uh, your partner, which ne isn't necessarily, you know, what, what you want to have, but it becomes control over, over yourself in your own life because all, you have this plan and now it's gone. That, that's, that's interesting. I never saw it as a, as a, as a control thing and specifically even a control thing about your, over yourself. What? Yes, exactly. Well, one thing is the word control, but but it's more like you 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 also lose the power and and the uh, the ability to choose because the one choice has been taken away. The choice that's that is whether you want to stay in the relationship or not is gone. Mm -hmm. so just took that choice for you, made that choice for you, and so the the reason why I mentioned this is because everything that people do after a breakup. Um, is based on getting your power back. And I want my power and I want it back right now. Not in a minute, not in an hour, not in a month, right now. So we start to do things that are absolutely counterproductive very often. Mm -hmm. and I often make a comparison between the reaction pattern you have when a breakup happens and the reaction pattern of an amateur diver. Because if, if you're like on 150 feet down and all of a sudden some part of your scuba gear is not working, then most people who are amateurs will start just acting out of panic. Mm -hmm. And that's the last thing you want to do. And if you, if you learn the techniques and if you're a professional or experienced diver, you do the opposite. You stop, you think, and then you act. Mm -hmm. So that's the exact same thing um, I suggest to people when they are in a breakup. You need to stop before you act. And most people feel like, I can't stop. I need to get my power back. I need to call her. I need to go over there. I need to stop her. I need to beat up her new boyfriend or whatever it is. Or you, yeah, or you even need to like, you want to, guys want to leave on their own terms, right? So you're getting, you're getting dumped. It's like, no, I don't want to get dumped. I want to dump you. I, yes. I, I want to make you mad at me because yes. I want to deliberately make you mad at me so that you're breaking up with me because I'm deliberately pissing you off, not because not because yeah. that choice is being taken away from me. That's an interesting way to put it because like it's like this. Uh, I don't know what it's called uh, in, in, in Canada, USA, this this uh, uh, musical game of, of you have uh, one chair and two people and musical when, chairs. Yeah, exactly. When the music stops, there's one chair to uh, to view. And that's kind of what's going on in a breakup because you do not want to be the person without a chair. So, yeah. so you need to have that power. You need to have that leverage. And so some people go to extremes to get it, whether mm -hmm. it's revenge, whether it's acting out, whether it's going the opposite direction, which is of course depression and stuff like that. So, so there's a whole batch of a bunch of really counterproductive actions that you talk, start doing because you lose your power. So that, that's the headline for everything that has to do with how you act after a breakup. So one of the things that I uh, always teach to guys when I'm, uh, when I'm talking about confidence and, and masculinity is that the secret to being sort of a powerful man is focusing on having power over yourself, focusing on having power over things that you can control and not trying to have power over the things that you can't control, such as other people, such as your ex uh, or your girlfriend and is, is really the secret to uh, surviving a breakup and through handling a breakup well, is that about con focusing on controlling yourself and, and not the other person? Absolutely, I absolutely 100% agree and it goes for everything in life. Um, the, the people who usually are the happiest are people who focus exactly on what you're saying is they understand that 
I can't control other people. It's impossible. I can, you know, I can take a gun and put it to your head and say, you need to do what I'm telling you. But you always have a choice of saying, nah, go ahead, pull the trigger. So, so ultimately, you don't have any control or power over other people. You can influence them and inspire them and motivate them. But ultimately, you don't have any power over them. Mm-hmm. And we all know how hard it can be to change something about ourselves, whether it's stop smoking or getting up earlier or working hard or whatever. So, and that takes a lot of effort. So trying to change other people is completely impossible. Mm-hmm. So, uh, and, and another interesting thing about power is I always say that you cannot have power without taking responsibility. It is absolutely virtually impossible. So the hardest thing for most people when they go through a breakup is understanding that even though you feel like your ex is the psycho bitch who's, 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 who, and she, it's her fault, all of it. I mean, <laughs> 99% her fault. Mm-hmm. I, mean, I may have thrown my clothes on the floor once back in January, but the rest is her. <laughs> and, and the moment you start thinking that way, it, it one thing is it's completely wrong. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then, let's just forget the moral aspect of it. You're cheating yourself, and you're cheating yourself big time by thinking like this. Because as a minimum, you have 50% of the responsibility of the relationship going in a good way and also the relationship getting fucked. So the more the more responsibility you take, and this goes for everything in life, but particularly for breakups, the more responsibility you assume, the more power you have. Because if you take, if you say to yourself, okay, I'm gonna take this, this, I own this. The more you take, the more you can control. If you say to yourself, for instance, oh, it's my ex's fault that I feel this way. Well, hallelujah, then you need to sit and wait for your ex to make your life better. <laughs> good, good, good luck with that. That's a train that never comes. Yeah. So the more responsibility you can take, the better, and the more power you will have over your life. Wow. And it, doesn't mean, it does not mean, and this is an important point, it does not mean that you are supposed to take responsibility for any of her shit at all so if she for instance sleeps with another guy and that's why the breakup comes along whatever you shouldn't start taking responsibility for her actions those are hers and hers alone Mm -hmm. you should take responsibility for whatever happened that made the relationship the way it is or why the hell you chose a girlfriend that was a skank to begin with if that's the (laughs) you know so so you always have some kind of responsibility and the sooner you learn to identify it and take and assume its responsibility, the more and the faster you get your power back. That's uh, that's that's very motivating stuff. That's great. 